welcome you all here nice to see that we have so many people in this channel here on discord um welcome to this very first developer development meetup um i'm really glad to see that there's so many participants here and listening to that um this is uh, the first time we're doing that this will be recorded and um yeah and this is just a small overview of the things um we plan to like having a slight structure here uh, showing what to expect today here um the overall time is estimated about 45 minutes um depending on the discussion we will have later uh, we can extend this up to one hour and um yeah it seems so that there is a highly interest in that which is awesome great to see that and um, for sure this um shows me that we should do this frequently so keeping all of you in the loop what we're going uh what we are working on what we're going to do and hearing your thoughts and and sharing your knowledge between all of us so this is mainly an event for all of us and not only for uh leaded or moderated by me and you're just like uh, passively um listening to that so it's planned today to have this right now this small welcome uh speech here and um later on in the next step, I will present myself and uh, Joss also. Um, then we were going through the development activities and of course, um, which highly expected. So what we plan to do for the upcoming uh, midterm future, let's say that like, like that, like uh, Q3 or Q4 until the end of the year. And afterwards we have, um, ho hopefully we have a vibrant discussion with questions and answers and uh, feel free to that so you can type in the chat your questions or you can even write uh, uh just like raise your hands and and uh, speak to us uh, which i prefer you just like kind of social interaction here be awesome so going over for the hours presentation so introducing myself here um um my name is ohager oliver it's not not a secret um and i'm a professional software engineer for several years already working in brazil since 2008 here um i'm um my focus is i'm, I'm considering myself like a full stack developer but my focus is more on front-end engineering or not focus it's my my affinity i have and within the ecosystem of uh signum i i prefer to work on front-end tooling and uh, trying to increase adoption by that. So my main stack is JavaScript slash TypeScript, um, React, Svelte, and Node.js. And my significant contributions right now is for uh, especially the Phoenix project, which is the cross-platform uh, cross wallet uh, for web, um, all major OSs, um, and the mobile wallet, which I took over maintenance right now and not only maintenance and even uh yeah so being the code owner right now um yeah another i think important contribution is signum js it's a javascript um or better saying a typescript sdk um isomorphic so that you can use within the browser on the back end on node.js stuff but it's also possible to work with uh php wordpress sites for example they're kind of bundles being able to work on web and using and interacting with the Signum nodes or with Signum network. There, the other thing is um, to get a little bit rid or less dependent on the faucets. So I introduced the account activation service, which is being used within BTDEX and the wallets, the Phoenix wallets. Um, the depository is an NFT based um, decentralized application um, trying uh, where you can register and show off your um, contributions on project you have there. It's still on the old branding, but will be rebranded um, as we're still in the transition, or especially I am in the transition to um, yeah, move over and rebranding all my parts uh, or my parts I'm responsible for. Um, smart contract inspector is the way that you can inspect the smart contracts on chain. Um, and there I'm also feel responsible. I'm responsible for the deep linking specification, which we call the SIP22. Um, this uh, we're starting to use more extensively right now, facilitating, for example, certain 
uh, payment actions and there will be more stuff coming up. Um, yeah, that's mainly about me. I'm with I'm in the entire blockchain system since 2000, 2000, 2017. Started with mining on Burstcoin, and uh, since two thousand nineteen, um, I start when I started working on the Phoenix project together with Blanky. So uh, the other contributors we formed the BAT, the Burst Apps team, at that times, and um, yeah, so. Um, this is my history within here, several contributions already. So going over, I will present for Joss in that case here. Um, so he's also a professor of software engineer. He's native Brazilian. Um, and so uh, he, his special, uh, he's an expert in, in, in Java and especially on the protocol side. So he's the one who really understands all the tiny edges and things of the, of the blockchain itself and the protocol. Um, he's the creator of the Block Talk um, framework for writing smart contracts in Java, um, still being developed and improved over the time. Um, so he's the creator of the BT Dex, the decentralized exchange we have here. Nowadays, it's coming like an all-in-one solution for um, addressing also miners. Um, he's the architect of the new consensus algorithm, the uh, proof of capacity, and uh, he's the writer of the Harvey bot and other very important uh, things. So he's really uh, the core of the core of this entire platform in that moment. Um, yeah, and um, so we can expect that much more things from him in the near future. So, um, given an overview of what's going on right now in the development activities, so um, people from, from, from the early days, like the BurstCon days, knows that we have the rebranding stuff. It took a little bit longer than we expected. This is due to really stuff like talking to the exchanges and all the uh, CMC, CoinMarketCap, uh, CoinGecko, and all that stuff. Um, I, I also, due to my, my, my time constraints, uh, I need to move over to the new repository organization from that one. This is working, what I'm trying to work on, this is what I mean by full transition to Signal Network organization on GitHub, so that we reorganize a little bit the things and cleaning up all this stuff. Um, so um, there's, of course, the Phoenix wallets. Um, I recently took over maintenance for the mobile wallet, which was done by Blanky. So uh, our my, my friend from, from San Diego, so he, he is not being able to be active right now due to personal constraints. Um, there's Signum JS, which is the JS uh, JavaScript SDK. As Joss already mentioned, we have the um, Java SDK and a JavaScript SDK. Um, so it serves for different purposes, uh, whatever way you want, want to work on. Um, then we have something which is a contribution from um, another guy with Hui. Hui is working on another smart contract compiler uh, so he recently had this raffle uh, where he started to testing it officially. Um, very promising piece of technology. We need to do some alignment on that that makes it compatible between the uh, SmartJ um, compiler with the Java compiler, while the SmartC compiler is a JavaScript compiler for um, using um, a proprietary um, C-like language. Uh, he already presented us to us internally, and it's really, a really impressive piece of work what we're having there. So thanks to that, and hopefully we will see that more in the in the future. Um, as I said, there is kind of going on more rebranding of peripheral uh, peripheral services and apps. Um, so changing the 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 logo mark and putting it in, in right domains and all that stuff has has to be the. We are right now working on the integration with Loot Boy. Uh, this is a, a, a partnership we are going on. Maybe we can call Frank on that also, that he will t uh, talk a little bit about this right in, in a few seconds. And then we are working already on implementation for upcoming hard fork. This uh, will be a kind of a fee system improvement so that we have a better throughput uh, and not being blocked by the fee slot enforcement. And uh, they're kind of polishing things for the POC plus protocol. Maybe there are details which Josh can tell on, but I would like to head over this rapidly to, to Frank, just like he mentioning what's up with this loot boy stuff. Maybe this would be nice if we can lose some words about that.
or not praying. <laughs> Seems he's not okay. Um, then I take over there. The Loot Boy is um, a platform from um, like an e gaming context um, where you can acquire uh, virtual items, gaming items, and all that stuff as fast as, as far as I saw. They have an app in the App Store, in the Play Store, uh, from Google and, and Apple, if I, if I remember that. And this is pretty, they have 10 million users using that application. And now it's possible that you can buy items with Signa. And uh, so we're working on uh, improving the integration on that so that buying that items is like uh, as seamless as possible. Um, this is something from the technical perspective. It has to do with deep linking stuff and doing some tests and all that stuff. Um, yeah, working on that. And maybe I think this is uh, already all the ongoing activities and all, I mean, probably something that uh, many people would like to see a little bit, um, a little bit interested, more more interested in. Um, there is, for example, the Phoenix wallets. Of course, there's uh, the iOS version. Um, <laughs> I have to work on that. I know that I was charged several times because uh, of that and and uh, so it's it's like uh, right now it's a hardware issue on my side sorry for that delay but uh, we will for sure we work on that and there will be an ios version like in that moment i will commit myself to that and saying like uh, until the end of the year for sure we'll have an ios version um something more that's going on that is something that i wanted to do since several months already this is uh, I call it here YubiKey support. It's even an open feature request in 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 the Phoenix GitHub for several uh, months already. Um, it's a little bit more generic. It's not only YubiKey support, but it's only a support for certain devices who have certain technical capacities and things compat compatible with the web authentication spec. Um, um, what I mean is in, in specific. Who knows a little bit better about that? Is the credential? Uh, how we get resident credentials? They call that so that we can store uh, kind of information on that um, device somehow. I know that people are looking towards ledger support, um, but we have a little bit more difficulties to that. And um, as far as I remember, there was you, on, the, on the newer la uh, ledger device, you cannot uh, it's close, so you cannot install own apps or custom apps for some reason. So I'm not sure if this ledger support will ever be, uh, yeah, realistic to do though to do, to do so i call it something here like paper wallet which which has to do like making a more seamless integration or import uh, easier import on other applications so the paper wallet will come with a qr code which can be scanned for example from the um you generate that for example on the desktop wallet and then you can go over to the, the mobile wallet and like scanning the code and then the account is imported um another feature which um we have on our platform is the payment subscriptions, like recurring payments. Uh, we haven't used this uh, right now because it's not very known that this feature exists, but uh, it's a very, I think, powerful feature. So that payment subscriptions will be supported. There will be a little bit more like smart contract publishing through deep linking stuff. So um, maybe I have to think about that, but it's on my to-do list uh, how this will be the best way to, to, to implement this UX wise. There will be more dashboard, a better dashboard, or several dashboards, to be honest. So, which will be for different profiles of users, like common user, like miner who's more interested, for example, in forged blocks and all that stuff. Um, this is something right now my to do list. Several feature requests we have on GitHub. Um, they need to be prioritized a little bit, but this is kind of an outlook of what's going on with the Phoenix wallets. Um, then I need um, just like to to make it easier to 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 on board in, in working or using, for example, the SDKs. It's just like, for me, my Signum.js documentation needs to be improved. I want to do more examples and even YouTube tutorials so that people can like jump in a little bit easier into the development for that. It's not really difficult, but um, it's like from the perspective of somebody who's used to work with that, but if somebody's new to that, so I think they need more help to, to ramp up. This is very important. Um, then some, Many people already requested that, and it's also something I'm looking forward to and really longing for is the um, a Signal Node command line interface. So that we have like a, a command uh, that we can use for, for a little bit more automating stuff and using things with cron jobs probably there we don't have a command line tool right now. 
Um, same for that, I already started working on that, that we have a command line tool for compiling contracts using the block talk, also known as SmartJ um, um, platform, oh, SM stuff. So that I already started on, but it needs some time. It needs to be defined a little bit better. And then we, of course, there are upcoming protocol improvements, which will be a continuous process. Um, we have on our on our near term or mid term horizon the improvement of the um, smart contract engine, so that we, for example, can interact with our own asset system, like tokens and all that. And then we are discussing, not really not sure how we will do that, but we we really long for a native DeFi capability. I mean, native, not by using smart contracts, um, because past or other projects has shown that there are risks if you let it flexible to developers, because uh, DeFi is, is, can be error prone. And if something went wrong, then usually there are high costs involved. And of course, we want to minimize this risk as much as possible. And then there are three dots that are saying like, oh, well, let's see what's coming up. Um, so we need that. So like, we don't know if we will touch, for example, the block time or not or whatever. So this is still open. It needs to be aligned with the community. I think there will be some voting on that probably. Um, not right, uh, not, not sure right now. But that more or less is what we have um, planned for the upcoming six months, probably Q3 and Q4, I say so. That doesn't mean that, for example, the native DeFi capability uh, capability will be ready on that, but we start the implementation on that for sure somehow in that in that kind of time frame. I'm not sure if, if just want to um, add something for that. If not, so we can go over. I see that Alexander has already put a bunch of questions here. Uh, we'll go through it by uh, one by one, but maybe I don't know if we uh, see. Why did you choose proof of commitment algorithm? What are the concerns and and advantages and advantages of this algorithm? I think this is, this worked out pretty good. So we remember that we have one pool, a really big pool, which had uh, also already the majority of the of the mining capacity. So um, with this new consensus, uh, we really, um, um, yeah, decentralized it more. And something very interesting we saw also, which I think I don't I don't know if we expected that or if you just expected that, but we have, for example, at least I think two or three new pools here. So a uh, great shout out to the pool operators. This is cool to see that, that, that you jumped on and, and helped supporting the network in that way. Also, all the miners coming over and all that stuff, which is important. But uh, also on the other side, in, I think with the commitment, this is something um, more ideological from my perspective. Like um, if a miner just jumps into mine and then sell the coin, I mean, it does not aggregate any value to the, to the system at all. So in the way that they're kind of um, incentivized to, to, let's say, stake uh, their coins in some way. Um, this makes, this keeps the value inside the chain, in, 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 inside the chain from, from, my, from my humble opinion, I think so. And um, yeah, it worked out greatly in, in terms of decentralization and now we're much more stable and uh, less threatened about that. So we'll go over through the list from, from Alexander there. So he's asking about, scared, he's scared about let me see that. Sigma does not have a uh, pre-mine that another coin has in its pure form, but there's already a huge amount of mine coins in previous years, which some perceive as pre-mine. It scares some when entering the coin. Should this scare new mining entrants? I would say no. I just like uh, and we um, there's something that is related to the to the to the cap we had. Um, so we removed the cap just bec uh, because of several activities um, and that happened since the past, like there were kind of scamming attempts or scams. There were the lost coins in Polynex. I'm not sure if they're really lost or if Polynex, for example, uh, will, will come back and, and just like um, put this all on the market. I'm not sure what happened with that millions of, of coins which they have there already. So uh, the cap is something like, um, that miners should not be scared about that and saying like, okay, we may have a constant, a constant income, but on the other hand, it's like, um, it's kind of um, something that, that people must not be scared about that. And what we see is like, we don't have really huge single owners. So we, the most coins are placed in the exchanges, namely Bittrex here. Um, I'm not sure if this should scare somebody, um, I'm not scared at all. 
Not sure if somebody would like to comment on that. Going over to the next question here, um, are this also, yeah, what potential does the network have for future use? Why should companies choose to partner with Signum? I mean, I would like to skip that question, unfortunately, because it is not really a development question. It's more like a business development question, probably. I mean, um, not sure if, if, if people really want to, uh, in that moment, have an, of course, this is a valid question. I'm not sure, but I, I would like to skip that because, I mean, technically wise, we are providing a, a, a pretty stable platform here. Um, but we figured out the last years that we were working on the platform that this is not only uh, what, what counts. So we still need to figure out how we can convince other people to use our coin. We started some partnerships right now. Um, for example, the loot boy thing is something that ca came up uh, by, by our efforts here in, and, and some of the networking activities we have going on. Um, um, there are so many coins to choose. So the question is valid to say, why should companies choose to partner with Signal? Um, it's very difficult to answer and I don't have any idea really reason for that, but we're trying to work on that. And we figured out that we need more visibility marketing. I think technical wise, we have a pretty solid piece of software here. Um, very major, um, but it's like, it must be visible to, to other people. And this is something that's out of reach for developers at a certain extent. Of course, the more developers we have and the more people start working and building apps or building cases with these uh, platforms, with the platform, um, the, the higher the probability is that we can uh, get on important people's radar. I don't want to say that Tesla guy name, but you know what I mean. And we have that advantage of the of the um, climate change movement thing. I think we fit very good into it. So this is something um, um, it's difficult to answer. I think that for industry, blockchain needs to major a little bit and uh, we should be prepared on that and prepare as much as possible. I, I already, in my context where I'm working, I'm trying to, 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 to check out opportunities if we can convince customers to use blockchain technology. Um, but it's not easy. From my, it's from my professional experience as a developer in a, in a company, which is like building systems and all that, um, you need very good reasons to, to, to convince people, conventional companies, to jump on the blockchain train. Most people are just like linking blockchain with coins, with cryptocurrency, and then they're all that prejudices they have. Very difficult one, very difficult. Growth potential, uh, something in the, in, the, in the right thing. Yeah, it's leaks adoption. I, I'm not really having an, an answer. If I would have the answer, then we wouldn't have the price we have now, which much more. Somebody wants to compliment, feel free. It's, it's interesting because I suggested last week on the BPSAA meeting, uh, something that we should start looking at the other project of the other members of the alliance and to see if we can uh, establish some interoperability tests or proof of concept and maybe making something on top of that. One thing is making proof of concept and the other is like ge uh, generating real use cases. So something uh, really should be something that goes hand in hand because we have done a lot of POCs already in, 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 in Burst and now in Signum. Uh, it's, it's better if we have more concrete use cases that will be aggregate more value from my perspective. But uh, there might be, I think the groundwork is laid out uh, for, for, for basic atomic swap, for example. But um, there must be kind of a true incentive why we should do that and not only saying, hey, we can do that. Um, this is something I'm a little bit worried about. And it's, as I said already, it's not really easy to find, for example, industry like use cases. There's somebody, cyber, for example, is asking something in that uh, direction. He's asking, uh, uh, I'm, I'm thinking about several times already it's like um, many things that cyber mentioned uh, regarding for example uh, storing that information publicly on the chain um, uh, my concern is always uh, for example if you say like uh, package tracking for example this is okay this is cool it's technically possible so but the public especially signum also we have this constraints due to the block times of course we can tune it a little bit we can increase that but there are kind of scaling issues and uh, this is not really clear how we can, um, on publicly wise, how we can address that. But what is already possible with Signum is like 
um, you make a private network in parallel and using that not for the coins itself, but for example, for the arbitrary tracking stuff and all that. Then you can get a much better, much higher throughput because you can tweak a little bit around in all the parameters. And this is something that um, um, I try to figure out, at least here in Brazil, um, where are the opportunities, where are the customers who are open-minded sufficiently that I can offer them that and say, hey, come on, I have a kind of piece of technology here which fits very good for your case, for example, tracking something. I know that we have, for example, here in my region, there's a startup which works using, unfortunately, another blockchain technology, and they make tracking for the largest um, meat producer. Um, uh, so this, there, there is something already going on, and I know that, for example, Brazil is very te uh, um, um, technology affin. So there are chances to do that. I'm not sure how this is in other parts of the country, to be honest. But it, it's on it's it's on my horizon. I want to see that. So one of my dreams is really using the technology, the Signum network, in in such an industrial in a industry context. It's awesome, and um, this is something we are looking for. But um, uh, I mean, just doing it right now and then waiting somebody hop in is is probably not best best approach. I mean, it's kind of opportunities that we need to, we need to check. But as uh, Josh said, all the other activities around that, like that. Uh, People start using that and integrating that in their context, which they know best. For example, the the gaming server or any other part we have, uh, uh, Loot Boy. This is really, this is the way which we can really grow. If if, if everybody like doing a little bit of that part, and and we are here to help out in, in that. This is what I I'm looking for. I want to see Signal being adopted by 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 many people and many companies. Um, potential we have. So, but it's not only the tech, as I said. There, there must be networking. You need, no, you need the right time, the right people knowing. You need some money to 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 put in your hands and making investments and all that stuff. And this is all we're doing in parallel. Um, but this is your right now, like a developer meeting, and um, there's so many facets. It's 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 really interesting and and challenging what we're doing here. Um, let me see. I'll never ask what happened to Pivoto because of the voting stuff. Um, it's still there. <laughs> um, we 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 quite we, we all, all almost returned them and, and working on that. Uh, but then there was the rebranding stuff and all that. But it's not that. It's just like on, only hold. It. I mean, what I want to do in the next step with that platform with the Bivoto one. So for people who doesn't know what that is, in 2019, I uh, me Shifas and another guy here from Brazil, a coworker. We participated on the World Blockchain Hackathon and we were amongst the top 20. There were more than 400 participants and more than 100 teams. And um, so um, we, we suggested a platform, a voting platform, um, publicly democratic uh, voting, anonymous, secret voting and all that stuff. And we got on the top 20, but we haven't uh, con continued on that project. So it stopped where, where we, we struggled more with eligibility things, but maybe we can, uh, we, we cannot, we should, I should return that platform or making something like an MVP probably, and then maybe open voting without that hard constraints, which will be needed for democratic elections, for example. Uh, this is something a little bigger but that uh, can be derived or evolved from there. But it's not that. Bivotal is still there, but I need to rename that, or maybe s -Votal. I'm not sure, or c -Votal. I don't know. <laughs> but for my way, it's like, it's just kind of my personal mission I have. Um, Signum.js, for example, is something that um, came out where I said, okay, like, hey, JavaScript is um, is almost the, the lingua franca of the, of, the, of the web development and even used in the backend stuff. And so, and we had something on, on, on JavaScript. And I said, okay, doing that, will maybe help people to get into it and being able a little bit uh, it's a little bit easy to to start developing for 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 that so i'm still it's it's not 100 percent true what i what i expected to aim for but i still have this as a personal uh, particular mission that i say guys come over here uh if you have an idea to develop something i just i help you I want to help you. Um, I, I don't want to make the implementation for you, but I help you on the core implementations or I help you to use the tools and how to do the things. I think Block Talk is going in the same direction, which is being making um, smart contracts accessible for average programmers like me. And, uh, and actually, when I, I, I started with Block Talk, for example, so the Smart J, uh, nowadays we call it Smart J, 
uh, it was like a breeze for me to, to work on the smart contract things. And uh, I got very excited about that. Um, this is, um, yeah, this is the idea, trying to attract people by tooling. But actually, we need to improve because it, it didn't went well at this moment. We have right now with a new movement and with the going on with the Stignum rebranding and all that, there are many people are interested. And I got a lot of questions from various communities, like Brazilian people are asking me. But most times, so unfortunately, it happens that many people start something, but then they're not going the entire pathway down. And this is, I think this is natural. I, I'm not complaining about that. Um, it's, it's important to, to see how we can incentivize people to, to being committed and, and, and continuing this stuff. You said that in the past, many developers developed for Burst, but it all scattered around and it's like lost and they're not being maintained anymore. And then you don't know if this is even works. And this, uh, um, this is, is, is an organizational management question a little bit, how we can we keep this all alive and all that stuff. But for example, I have to mention that um, the guy, he's not here today, it's iPro, for example. Um, I call him iPro, but he was responsible for the revamping of the pool software. Um, he made an entire new interface. I mean, it's great, it's awesome to see that. He was the guy who made this form flow, calculated things. These are the kind of, of things uh, uh, to see that it makes me makes me happy and proud to see that hey, people are doing that and they're jumping in and, and doing that and yeah this is um, my comment on that question but it's very important I think the more people we have we are developing and they don't need, need to be committed like I am or probably Joss is um, but doing something if something and, 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 and even if it's a, it's a tiny tool something like this would be awesome to see that because maybe there's somebody who's going out there and, and writing something awesome and saying like developing something awesome and it turns out to be a killer app uh, this is uh, really hard to foresee and the more the more people we have doing something uh, the, the higher the chances of that it can be a breakthrough somehow this is my opinion on that yep so we're almost having one hour of uh, discussion here so many people are very interested um are there any final questions we can do for sure i this 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 meeting will be repeated somehow um, I, I want to see that uh, more more frequently that we, we, we got more in contact and knowing each other a little bit better. Um, but it's like one or two easy questions to finalize it for today. And then we will see uh, making some uh, questions about feedback and what we can do better in the next. And then we will probably plan an, uh, another one in, in one month. So feel free to final questions probably. Ah, yes, somebody asked if we will record or stream that on YouTube. Um, let's see where this will be evolved to. Um, at this moment, it was more like for us here, the community, and later we can see if we make it like, uh, like we have in the past with Schiffers, like uh, Block Talk. Uh, no, not Block Talk, uh, Let's Talk. So uh, let's see if, if, if we can do this, something in that way. Yeah. Um, let's see. Do I see more? Ravencoin added to BTDEX. <laughs> Yeah, I think, guys, uh, it's a Kotlin migration. Oh, no. Ah, plans for UI UX updates. So Francesco has asked this already. Um, yeah, I, I, for my part, from the from the Phoenix um, wallet, I want to improve that steadily. Um, I'm not really happy with the dashboard right now. And I know that certain information for specific users, uh, like miners, for example, are missing. Um, and this needs to be improved. Um, I mean, there won't be any radical changes in the UI because otherwise this has to be an entire rewrite of the front end. But for sure, uh, I'm pretty sure that in, in four or five years, I don't know, uh, there will be a new framework and then we will rewrite the entire thing or create a new wallet for sure. <laughs> I'm pretty sure about that. I even have some ideas to make a lightweight uh, uh, Chrome extension, for example, uh, that we have a, like a MetaMask mini um, wallet, just like, just on, on for sending things and seeing the balance so that you don't not always need to install, for example, Phoenix and all that stuff. Uh, there are many ideas I have personally. I'm sure Joss has much more ideas than I. Um, it's like make an online website, uh, coffee mugs can be chased. Oh, we can do all that. <laughs> yeah. Um, contacts, yeah. There are feature requests, Paul, uh, for, for sure. They are there and I take this very serious. And, and I really like to see that context, for example, also. So these are feature requests. Feel free, yeah. So um, I can, uh, if, if you go to our um, GitHub repository, 
we can uh, an, an open feature request or if you don't have a github account maybe uh, um, this rich, uh, feature request can be posted here inside our channels the dev uh, developer launch for example and then i transform this in an issue to be worked on but um, as you as, as you need to know um we have a I have my daily work here and um, I need to, to to manage my time a little bit to, to do the things the way I can do. Um, we even or I would like to, to to establish kind of a voting for features um, need to see how we can do this the best. Now that the rebranding is almost uh, the transition is almost done. I have some other works I have to do there, but um, I really plan to 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 dig into it and be a little bit more active back on the Phoenix wallet and improve that. Um, the rebranding thing was like many things and activities we worked on and uh, not 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 stressy, but uh, demanded a lot of time and it was very important to do so. Yeah. Yeah. What if it make us the agency? So guys, um, I would like to close here because uh, time is already over. So one hour. Um, I'm very happy to see that we have so many people here who jumped in. I will... Um, provide the recording later so they will more almost the audio track and um yeah i think it's worth repeating this event somehow um, but i'm open for any kind of um suggestions to make it better in, in or if it's if it's if it can be done there better but uh, yeah thank you all for all that um attention here and yeah hopefully we can we make signum go to mars <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.